If you've ever wondered what camera gear is necessary when starting your own YouTube channel, then this video is just for you. Today I'm going to be covering all of my essentials that I always bring with me in my camera bag in order to make these videos and take photos for my Instagram page. Let's get started. So on one of my most recent uploads, I received a comment from Albert V basically stating that he wants to begin documenting the process of his build and uploading it to YouTube, but doesn't necessarily know where to start in terms of camera gear. I thought that this would be a perfect time for me to show you guys what's been in my camera bag for the entire year of 2020 and what's worked really well for me with documenting the progress of my coupe so far. All the gear that I've accumulated in this camera bag has been for the purpose of filming vlogs, being able to record cinematics, and also being able to take high quality photos for my Instagram page. With that being said, I'm going to open up my camera bag and we're going to get started looking at all of my essentials for the year of 2020. So the camera that I'm currently using is a Sony a6400 with a small rig cage attached to it. And what that small rig cage is there for is basically so I can mount my audio and also anything else that I could possibly need to mount if I needed to do so. The Sony a6400 allows me to film video in 1080p at 120 frames per second, which basically allows me to slow down any footage by 20% so I could get super slow motion shots. Alongside with 1080p, it also allows you to shoot 4K, so this talking portion that we're having right now is shot at 4K 24 frames per second, and you could also shoot 30 frames per second in 4K as well. Overall, this camera has worked really well for me. The only one thing that's kind of missing from this camera, in my opinion, is the in-body image stabilization. With that in-body stabilization missing, you will see your shots to kind of look a little bit shaky, so definitely investing in a gimbal later on would be very worth it using this camera. But for what you're doing, if you're just a beginner, this A6400 is gonna be perfect for you. With that in-body stabilization missing, that brings us to our next topic, which is gonna be our lenses. Moving on to these, these are going to be my lenses. I have a couple lenses right now. I actually have three and each one serves a different purpose, so I'm going to go through them with you guys right now. So starting off with easily my most expensive lens, but definitely my most underused lens, it's going to be the 16-70 to f4 Zeiss. I bought this lens when I initially bought the camera. Instead of going with the kit, I decided just to go body only and then pick up a dedicated lens that's going to allow me to do anything that I wanted to do. And this lens was good for that. When you pick up these cameras, usually they come with a kit lens for a higher price, but instead I just went with the body only and picked up this 16 to 70 because it is a zoom lens and it allows you to get really wide angle shots and really up close shots for detail. And with this optical steady shot built in, that makes up for the camera not having in-body stabilization and instead the stabilization happens within this lens. This lens is definitely an expensive lens to pick up. Um, I picked it up just for an all around use lens. But since then I've picked up more lenses and now this lens kind of just sits in my bag. So if you wanted to pick up a lens like this for your first lens, it would be good. But if you're upgrading to prime lenses later on, this is a good one just to keep as a spare in case anything goes wrong. Or if you know that you're gonna be recording shots that are gonna have a lot of shake within them like rollers, this lens is the one you're gonna wanna go with. Moving on to my favorite lens for shooting photos of cars, it's gonna be this one. It's the 50 millimeter F 1.8 from Sony specific. So this lens is a prime lens. So essentially when you take your shots, they're gonna come out a lot more crisp and a lot more focused with a lot more detail as well. With the zoom lenses like the 16 to 70, you're losing a lot of detail when you're zooming in. This one, you don't really have to worry about, but you're gonna be stuck at that one focal length for the entire course of this lens. These lenses are super cheap and pretty easy to come by. I got this one from a Mike's camera shop used and I think I paid $100 for the lens in total and it's in perfect working condition. All the shots that you see on my Instagram that weren't taken with just my iPhone have all been shot using this lens. I would highly recommend you pick up this lens. This one I also use on my camera for video, mainly when I'm shooting cinematics. If you guys caught the video where I was mocking up my wide body kit from last week, the entire thing was filmed on a tripod using this lens. 50 millimeter is by far one of my favorite lenses that I have. And lastly, the lens that I'm shooting on right now that I won't be able to show you guys because it is on my camera is the one I use for all these talking portions. Whenever I'm walking around and vlogging, that is the lens that I'm using. 
This lens is the 16 millimeter Sigma with the F 1.4. Now when I say these f1 point whatevers, that's basically talking about the aperture and that controls the blurriness of the background. There's a lot more science behind it, but that's basically all you need to know when you're looking at a lens. This f1.4 makes the background super blurry. Right now I have it at 2.8, so the background's probably just kind of normal. But with the 16 millimeter f1.4, you're gonna get a really wide angle shot that's perfect for filming vlogs and you'll be able to control the blurriness of the background as much as you possibly want. So if you think about it with those two lenses that I picked up that are prime lenses, I have a 16 millimeter, I have a 50 millimeter, and they both have low f-stops, which kind of defeats the purpose of this 16 to 70 millimeter, and that's why this kind of stays in my camera bag. So moving on to a couple more technical parts of my camera equipment, Right now, the audio that I'm capturing is a Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, and that's just so I could get a lot more crisp audio while I'm filming these vlogs. Also, another piece of audio that I started out this year on is gonna be this Rode Video Micro microphone. This mic is still made by Rode, so it's still gonna be good quality. It was $50. It just doesn't have a lot of the adjustable features that the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus has, but for $50, you honestly can't really beat this microphone. Moving on to lighting, I have two uh, key lights that I use whenever I'm filming these talking portions or if I need to highlight something on the car that I may be doing. I also have this aperture light. It's a mini accent light and you turn it on with a switch and it basically illuminates whatever you're doing. So if you wanna get some warm tones, this is perfect. You could also control this so you could have, let me see, a little bit cooler of a tone too, depending on what you are filming. If I'm doing something underneath the car, I bust this out, put it under the car wherever I'm wrenching on something, and it just makes it so you can see what I'm doing a lot easier. So aside from lighting, audio, and the main camera itself, basically all that's left is gonna be little accessories that I use to just make this a little bit easier when I'm actually out shooting. First thing, it's gonna be this Manfrotto mini tripod. Just spreads out like that. You can place it on whatever you need to place it on and then this adjusts and that's how you can kind of hold the camera like that vlog style position. And um, yeah, whenever you're not using it, you could set it up. If you're doing something under a car, you could set it up using this. This thing I think is like 15 bucks and it's pretty critical for my channel and what I'm creating. Another little thing that I always carry with me is gonna be this puffer to clean my sensor and then this lens pen, which has two sides. This is basically like a lens cleaning cloth, and this is a little brush so you could dust off any dust that's built up on your actual piece of glass. This is the case that houses all my filters. With filters, the only filter that I'd recommend you guys really pick up getting if you're gonna be shooting vlogs is gonna be a variable ND filter. If you're not going for the best cinematics, then you don't necessarily have a need for a circular polarizer just yet. A lot of the photos and videos that I'm creating here, I don't really use my circular polarizer as much as I thought it would. But eventually, if you guys wanted to pick up a circular polarizer, you should because it does cut down reflections on your car's paint. Since my car currently has like three or four different colors on the body, I kind of just let it be what it is and I don't really stress about the circular polarizer too much. But for just getting started, if you wanna have a low aperture with a super blurry background and it's super bright outside, the variable ND filter is gonna be the way to go for sure. And last but not least, the one thing that I carry with me at all times is gonna be my hard drive. This is a lacy hard drive. It's one of the rugged hard drives, so it comes with this rubber case around the end just to protect it from any shocks or damage. This hard drive is four terabytes, and any photos that I take, the footage that I'm recording, even off this video, everything gets imported into this and not onto my computer's actual hard drive, just straight into this, and I could go back and retrieve anything that I ever need. Going with that, this is also my MacBook Pro. Uh, all my videos are edited on this. All my photos are edited on this uploading, scheduling things, everything is done using this laptop. I don't have a crazy computer setup or anything like that to run my softwares. And the softwares that I do use are gonna be Final Cut Pro 10, which is basically an upgraded iMovie. iMovie, when you're starting out, would be great as well, but Final Cut Pro 10 is perfect for me, especially if I'm doing some freelance video work on the side. For photos, I primarily use Lightroom. Occasionally I'll use Photoshop if I need to do some stuff there, but Honestly, for getting started, Lightroom for photos, 
iMovie for video, eventually Final Cut Pro 10. If you want to commit and go all in for sure, then Final Cut Pro 10 is exactly what you're going to want to use if you are a Mac user. But with that, that basically wraps up everything that I've accumulated in my camera bag during the year of 2020. Of course, there's going to be more cameras that are far better than what I'm using right now. But for something that's cost efficient, this setup is definitely great. So all in all, if you're thinking about starting a channel or you're thinking about doing some type of content creation around automotive things, I hope this video is gonna help you out and help you kind of judge where you're at and what you wanna do. If you guys did enjoy this video, please be sure to stick around and hit that subscribe button because it truly does help me out. I love seeing the community that we're building right now and it makes me stoked to keep creating these videos for you guys. Let me know what you thought about my camera gear recommendations down below. And with all that being said, I'll see you guys next week. Peace.